Hey, what's up? Hello, my name is Ariana. I am a 26 year old content creator living in Dallas and I make lots of lifestyle and bookish content. Today's video is going to be a very, very fun one, but also kind of informational. So I, as of today, have read 115 books for the year. <laughs> On May 1st, I hit 100 in the year total. So since then, a lot of people have been like, girl, how are you already at 100 books for the year? Well, we're gonna get into that today. So let's get on with it. So I have my laptop. I basically compiled the amount of physical ebooks and audiobooks that I've read so far this year, and you're gonna be shook. <laughs> physical books, I've read nine. Just nine. Uh, ebooks, I have read 51. And audiobooks, I have read 54. So, like, that is where I'm getting all of my bookish content. I also want to start out by saying that I am not purchasing every book or audiobook that I've listened to. I have gotten a lot of them for free. Um, last year I was really big into using Libby or um, Cloud Reader, which is the same thing. Um, one of my libraries uses Cloud Reader instead of Libby, but it's the same concept. I do pay for two subscriptions currently. I pay for Kindle Unlimited and Scribd. Uh, for a while, I did pay for Audible, but it's just not worth it to me because you only get one book a month. The Plus catalog is there, but I don't know. I didn't really find a lot of books in the catalog that I wanted to listen to, so it wasn't worth it to me, so I canceled it. Anyways, so here's the big question. How do I find time to read all of these books? We're going to start with audiobooks, which have been the biggest way that I have read 100 books this year so far. I typically listen to them at 1.5 or 1.8 times the speed. I can't say focused when it's only on like normal speed because when they record the books, they just talk so much slower than even conversational speed and I just don't stay focused. If I really want to take my time with an audiobook or because I really like the narrator's voice and there's a few of them, we can do a separate video on that. But I will listen to it on 1.2 times the speed because it's a lot slower, but it's faster than the slow reading that they do. <laughs> that makes sense. But I listen to it literally at like all times of the day. When I'm commuting, when I'm cooking, cleaning, walking my dog, putting laundry away, painting, literally whenever. I also work as a an essentially an executive assistant or administrative assistant is pretty much what I do at work. So I have a lot of mindless tasks and that's when I listen to a lot of my audiobooks. If I'm not on a call, I can just listen to my audiobooks and do my work and that is where I get a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them read because if it's like an eight to nine hour audiobook, because I listen to it faster um, between my commute to work, at work, and then my commute home, I can typically finish one audiobook per day. Part two, we're gonna talk about ebooks. So in January, I upgraded my old Kindle to my new Kindle. It is just the basic Kindle. It's the one that's like 80 bucks. So I started this thing where I was like, okay, I'm gonna get 10,000 steps a day. I was going anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes a day, walking on the treadmill just at like two and a half to three, I think was my speeds. Um, just walking. I have a pop socket on my Kindle, so I hold it in my right hand and I, you know, walk like I normally do and I read. <laughs> Reading on the treadmill has been a really big help in reading the amount of ebooks that I've read. I also have the app on my phone, so if I'm like in line at the grocery store and they're taking a really long time because I wait until Sunday evenings knowing it's gonna be packed. <laughs> so when I'm waiting in line, I'll just sit and scroll and read. Typically, anytime I would be scrolling on my phone, I have pretty much replaced that with reading, whether it's an audiobook, ebook, or even a physical book. 
and now we're gonna talk about part three my physical books so i've bought a lot of physical books this year and i've only read nine physical copies <laughs> oops you know sometimes i'll take a physical copy of a book to a gym that's how i read most of hook line and sinker by tessa bailey was on the treadmill <laughs> But also, like when I'm reading a physical book, right now I'm reading The Ghost Writer by Alessandra Tor for Book Bonanza. I'm really loving it, but I have it in like a tablet sleeve and I take it to work with me. Um, so if I want to pull it out at lunch, I can read it and I don't have to wait until I get home at night. So I just kind of always have at least one type of book on me. <laughs> you know, I never go anywhere without my phone, so I always have like a bunch of audiobooks saved on script so I can just go to the next one when I'm done or I have ebooks you know I just always have a book on me and so that brings us to our other tips first off kind of going off of what I was just saying is always have a book to read whether you are waiting at the doctor's office or in line at the grocery store or whatever if you have ebooks on your phone, your Kindle, if you have a physical copy of a book. I always have something and that just helps me replace any social media time with book time. And it's the same with TV. Like I don't watch a lot of TV. A lot of times I will just fall asleep. <laughs> so instead I read books and I stay more engaged and awake. If you're like, how do you have time to read? Check the screen time on your phone. See how much time every single day you're spending on things like TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all of that and try to swap some of that time every day for like an extra 30 minutes of reading. If you're anything like me, you can get lost on TikTok in like, you can, oh I'm gonna watch it for five minutes. Five hours later you're still watching videos like it's addicting and so are books. So I would rather just read instead of endlessly scroll all the time on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. And also people on YouTube, like booktube, will have you thinking that you have to read a certain amount of books every month. All of these creators, I love a lot of them, uh, they have monthly TBR games and videos and they plan out all these books they want to read for the month and then they go and read them. Girl, I can't do that. I've tried and then I don't even touch any of those books. I'm such a mood reader, so I'm like, hmm, what am I in the mood for today? A dark mafia romance? Okay. A super smutty novella? Okay. Something that's gonna tear my heart out and then put it back together? Okay. It's just, I have a lot of different vibes of books that I read and some days, you know, I want something really cute and sappy and adorable and then other days I'm like, Dark Mafia romance it is! <laughs> I have typically one audiobook per day, I have one ebook going, and I have one physical book going right now. So I'll have three different mediums of books that I'm consuming, and a lot of the times they're nothing alike. Like today I had Malice by Coralie June, The Ghost Raider by Alessandra Tor, that is my physical book, and then my ebook is King of Shadows by Amelia Wilde. So all three of those are very, very different. I didn't really have any issues like thinking one was the other. I don't know, I'm just, I guess, really good at being able to separate what book is what. <laughs> like I don't just set my mind on one book and then go until I finish it. I kind of jump back and forth depending on my mood at the moment. Don't feel like you have to read books of a certain length. You know, most romance books like this, Like these books, if you can see, they're all roughly the same size because romance books are typically about 300 pages, maybe 400 at the higher end, closer to 200 at the lower end, or novellas 100 pages or less. <laughs> Don't feel like you have to read all longer books. I just recently got into novellas this year and I've absolutely been loving reading novellas. Yeah, don't feel like you have to read like a certain length of a book or even a certain genre. Like, I have a lot of romance because I really like romance. But I also have like some spiritual books. I have a few non-fictions, but I don't 
actually read nonfiction books. Um, that's just, I haven't picked them up. Um, I also have poetry collections. I have a whole shelf of them. Absolutely love them and they're quick reads. Overall, I really like smutty romance books and that's just the kind of vibe that I like. So I go through them very, very quickly. If you don't like a book, don't even worry about finishing a girlfriend. DNF that book that is did not finish. A lot of people on like booktube use that term, but you know, life is too short. There's so many books out there. Read the ones that make you happy and like you enjoy. Don't bother reading something because a lot of people on TikTok like it. And I know some books just aren't for me and that's fine, but I don't waste my time reading them. Something else that I really enjoy doing is I go into books pretty much blind. So this year on Spicy Book Talk, I kept getting sucked into these like thirst traps of authors being like, oh yeah, there's a scene like this and this happens and this happens in the scene in my book, you should go read it. And then based on that one scene alone, I would go to my Amazon, download the book to my Kindle and read it not knowing anything about the book other than that one scene that's in it and i have found so many favorite books like that so go into a book's blind like don't feel like you have to know everything about a book before you read it like it's kind of fun so that is kind of my long spiel of how i have read over a hundred books in just over five months this year if you have any specific questions go ahead and comment them down below shoot me a dm on twitter instagram whatever and we can talk about it thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you again very very soon in a brand new video okay bye guys